This video is going to cover the mouse wheel, and you can find this in the conventions and tips section of the Harrison Mix Bus manual. And there's a lot of cool things that you're probably used to doing with a mouse wheel or just the mouse in general and other dolls. And it's good to know how these functions work and can apply in a different doll, such as Mix Bus 32C. So the first one we're going to look at is zooming the editor canvas timeline by mouse wheeling the ruler bar or anywhere by holding control. And that's a good thing to know because I was kind of stuck myself going, okay, I can only, I can scroll up or down with the mouse wheel, as you can see right here. And this is a fairly big session. But if I hit command on the Mac, which is what I'm using, I can go back and forth if my mouse is in the ruler bar. But let's say I wanted to go right here, I can scroll in and out right here as well. And that just makes for a smoother way of moving around the session. So let's say I scroll back in and then I wanna scroll down. Let's say this, I wanna look at this section here. You know, wherever the center of my mouse is, that's where it's going to scroll at. So I can kinda mess with some stuff here. If I want to, I can scroll back in. So I can move down here and look at that. I was like, all right, that looks good. Let's go back up. Let's say I want to look at these symbols right here. I kind of move around like that. And I found that if I press control, wherever my mouse is on a track, I can actually expand just that track. It doesn't expand all of them, but I can expand just the track alone, which is really neat. And I can do that with mouse wheel. You can see I moved it to right there. So I can expand that, I can scroll down, and it's like, all right, let's look at that one right there. All right, that looks good. You know, there's a lot of different options. So if you have your hand on the left side of the keyboard, all the main shortcuts that you need for Mixbus is primarily there in the first place. There may be a few things you have to go other places for, but um, your hand should pretty much be here anyways. And another thing that you can do is hit Shift, while you're using the mouse wheel and it actually goes back and forth. See, so it goes from side to side. If you release, it goes up or down. If I hit command, it'll zoom in and out so I can see a certain spot a little bit easier. And then if I hit control, it'll zoom just the track up or down like that. Okay, so that's the first thing that I like doing. And another thing you can do with the mouse wheel is adjust knob and fader values. So let's say I'm right here. And for instance, I can't do it on this fader because in this window, the mouse is primarily gonna be going up or down. But let's say if I click on that track, I can take my fader here and scroll it up or down like that. And I can also do it on any of the knobs, like the pan knob, I can do it on the trim. I can do it on the gain and even on the compression level or the threshold. It's just as easy to take the mouse as well. And if you hit command, you have a finer adjustment. So you can make really small adjustments where if you let go, you can make really big adjustments. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do with that. You can also adjust the metronome volume by mouse wheeling over the metronome button. All right, so if I go to metronome, you can see here's the preferences. Let's see if this works. Oh, it does. So look at that. So just by having the mouse over the metronome, I can use my mouse wheel. See how it showed the box? Enable, disable metronome, right click to access preferences, mouse wheel to modify level signal. So that's really cool. That's a very helpful function to do in that situation. You can also nudge the playhead forward and backwards in the mini timeline. So this is the mini timeline up here. I can scroll, let's say I'm on verse two. I can scroll ahead or back anywhere in there, which is really neat. And advancing a clock value such as bars by mouse wheeling over the appropriate number in the clock. So here's zero minutes, minute one, minute two, minute three, minute four minute five and so on. I can do it for the seconds. I can do it for the milliseconds, <laughs> anything like that. So that's kind of neat. If you want to get to like, you know, minute two real fast, or let's say you're mixing a song and someone says, hey, at minute 
at mark two minutes and 30 seconds, I hear a certain weird something going on. You can go in there and you can kind of roughly find the area where you need to be. It's like, all right, well, he said two minutes and 30 seconds. Let's go check that area out. So that is the mouse wheel. And like I said before, you may be used to using the mouse wheel in other DAWs and getting used to how Mixbus functions and how it uses the mouse wheel. It's just another learning curve that you kind of have to get used to. But once you figure it out, it's pretty easy to get around the session. So if you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I release new content. And go ahead and leave me a comment down below and let me know how you use the mouse wheel in Mixbus or maybe you're using Pro Tools or Reaper. And give me your likes and dislikes about each one so we can kind of learn from each other. And until next time, I'm Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.